Hi, I wanted to show you a second part of a video of an application that we've been building. Um, give you a quick summary of the first video. We're actually talking about an application on running on the uh, BlackBerry Playbook, which you can see beneath me here. Um, you'll, you may hear some background sound in this video. I'm actually outside, and there's a good reason as to why I'm outside, and I'll explain that in a minute. This is an ArcGIS application, so it's a mapping application. Um, ESRI are the providers of the API for this. Um, so we're using, we, this is built in Air, <coughs> Adobe Air, um, again running natively on the uh, BlackBerry Playbook <coughs> and it's hitting an ArcGIS server so you can actually see here what we've loaded is a, a road, a, a, a street map um, and again to repeat what I've said in the first video we've, we've got a basically a, a menu system on the left hand side, a main menu at the bottom left, sub menus in the top left and then we've got the map here which is a fully interactive map and you can switch from street to aerial views. Um, what I wanted to show you are a couple of, in the first video I spoke about some of the functionality here. Um, let's just select the advanced map tools button here. Now uh, in the first video we spoke about geocoder and draw which allowed users to zoom to a particular address they typed in and to actually draw on the map. We've added a couple of additional ones here. <coughs> the check-in one is the one I wanted to show first. Um, and this actually uses the GPS on the device so let's just open it up and you'll see this pop-up comes up I'm just gonna click on the load venues button now what's happening here is um, we're actually loading the uh, the this current location using the GPS on this device um, once that's loaded and we'll actually see you can see in the top left it says loading um, we should see the lat long appear and it's a little slow I've noticed with my GPS watch it takes a while to lock into the satellite so it takes a little it takes a um, 30 seconds or so to load um, once it's loaded the current location it then goes out to simple geo <coughs> and um, draw, draws from there the uh, shops and gyms etc that are within a certain distance of, of this location so we will populate a list on the left hand side here with all those locations um, so it's a, so a two-part thing. We, we grab the, the location using the GPS on board the playbook and then we call Simple Geo's API to give us those venues. And then once we've done that, we can actually step through and get some of the details of each of the um, locations that are, are, are pulled back. Um, and we could also do a check-in or a check-out. And I'll show that in a minute. Again, this, uh, this takes a little while to, to load. So we're, we're, whilst we're waiting for that, let's just see if we can keep going. Yeah, um, the framework itself is um, allows us very simply to to load various widgets. So um, we've been adding additional widgets to this base framework uh, as we've gone. You can see there that we've now got GPS. That probably took a minute actually, so it's pretty slow. Um, I'm not sure whether there's um, whether that's something that can be um, improved in on the device or whether it's just the nature of GPS. Again, with my GPS running watch uh, I see the same kind of issues so let, as you can see in the uh, in the top left we've got the lat and the long longitude of this location and down here we've actually populated a list of, of, of locations that are near um, where we are so you can see this basically names of, of different places let's just walk down the list here and see let's do hunters and gatherers so that so there on the right hand side we've uh, we've populated the name, the address, where it is, and the phone number. We can go through the list as well and, and update uh, what's in there. So I want you to imagine that someone's going to uh, a, a location and they're going to say they're going to fix, I don't know, fix the air conditioning system in a particular shop. It's a facility management company, and we're going to go to this personal fitness place and and, and look at their um, their air conditioning system. So uh, a person could come, the worker could come. Um, log into the log into this application. Um, oh, incidentally, the 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 map was uh, was centered. Let me just come on this. Come on, move, move, move. Um, you'll see the map was centered o on this location, um, and we've added a marker to the map as well. And we could we could make it zoom in a bit more than that. So anyway, so the worker is going is going to go and fix the air conditioning system. He selects it, it from this list, Carlisle's personal fitness based on his current location. He clicks next. And he's got the option here to then check in or check out of that particular location. Let's say he wants to check in, so he's just about to do the work. I'm going to put 
name in, say it's Rory, and his work ID is number 16. And then we'll just check check in. So let's check hit the check in button. And basically, it just sends. In this case, it doesn't because this is obviously a demo. But this could send the venue name, the name of the worker, the ID of the worker, and and a timestamp to a centralised computer system, which uh, would then log that 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 person, that worker, into that particular location. Similarly, when he when he finishes the work, he could step outside and fire up the application again and walk through the same something similar. And just check out, and the centralised system would then would then would then see that and uh, check him out. So this button just takes it to, takes you to home. And again, we could do multiple check-ins in here. So let's just close that, um, and then click on the new layers. So we've added a widget which allows users to actually add um, their own layers to the map. So if one wanted to see weather information or demographics or any other. Um, data that they wanted to overlay on top of the map. This this widget actually allows that. So we've got a couple of canned ones. We've got demographics and weather here, um, and we've also got the ability for users to type in their own um, their, their own endpoint for this. So let's just add the weather uh, weather um, map information. And there it is. We've just loaded. We can see that there's actually a storm coming here. Um, so that's that's gone out, reached out to a, an endpoint, and automatically overlaid that on top of the map. Um, and let's just, just, just for greens, let's just add demographics as well. I found some demographics information out there, and we'll add that as well. And that's rather cool. So even though uh, the weather information now sits underneath that, you get the idea that you, could, uh, you can actually add those. Uh, and in this case, we've only ad allowed users to add that, inf that data. We could easily allow management of, of, of layers as well. So there is two new widgets, one which adds additional uh, um, layers on top of the map, um, and then another one which um, is uses simple geo to allow a user to uh, check into a particular location. Thanks for watching.